her saying to me, Sholly, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Oh, shut up, you stupid bitch. All right, lads, so I just wasted four hours of my time watching this shit show of a documentary and couldn't help but make this video. Queen Cleopatra has opened to one of the worst Rotten Tomatoes score ever in its history. Now, you've probably heard the main controversy around this documentary where people didn't really like the idea of turning Cleopatra black. But apart from this huge distortion, this documentary also got some of the other major things wrong. And in this video, I will tell you everything about it, so you don't have to waste four hours of your precious time like I did. First things first, the director of this docudrama responded to the criticism asking, what bothers you so much about a black Cleopatra? Now, if it's not a big deal to the director, why change her to black? If you truly didn't care about the color of Cleopatra's skin, you would have done your best to make sure her appearance was as historically accurate as possible. The documentary clearly mentions that there were three primary populations in Egypt at the time. Native Egyptians, Greeks who migrated with the Ptolemies, and a significant Jewish community. So they clearly admit the Greek people migrated here alongside the Ptolemies. And yet the entire family of Ptolemy is shown to be black and the documentary actually contradicts itself when it talks about Cleopatra's mother, because it goes to great lengths at pointing out that we don't know for sure who Cleopatra's mother was. And yet, it also depicts the entire Ptolemaic family line as black, which given historical accounts of their appearances and family history is absolutely false. The documentary also selectively removes any images of Roman busts or Egyptian coins that has Cleopatra's face on it, because that could complicate the narrative of Cleopatra being black. This documentary disregards the only pieces of physical evidence we have regarding Cleopatra's appearance. And throughout the show, they keep saying there is no evidence on how she actually looked like, and despite that, they say a Venus statue was modeled after Cleopatra. He erects a statue made of gold and is dedicated to Isis slash Venus. But it's in the likeness of Cleopatra. This documentary is filled with contradictions like this. It is widely accepted among historians and scholars that Cleopatra, being of Greek Macedonian descent, would have a fair or light-skinned complexion, similar to the other members of the Ptolemaic dynasty. And it should be common knowledge that Northern Africans were light-skinned. But no, based on no real-life evidence, they're trying to change the course of history, a history that doesn't even belong to them. And somehow, the director seems to think people from the African continent only have black skin. I understand it's not important whether she was black, white, or brown, but what's important is to make a documentary that depicts her true character, which this documentary also fails to do. For example, the language spoken by the Ptolemy's government officials was Greek, and if any native Egyptians wanted to participate in the government, they were required to learn the Greek language. But many of the Greek-descended Egyptians never bothered learning the nation's native language. But Cleopatra learned at least seven or nine languages, and legend has it she was the first Ptolemy to ever fluently speak the native Egyptian language. She learned the Egyptian language in order to be able to better connect with Egyptian populations, and this turned out to be a useful tool against her enemies as well. For instance, other Macedonian descended Egyptians, like her younger brother, aka her first husband, spoke to their armies through interpreters. But Cleopatra could command them herself, and history describes her way of talking as charismatic and persuasive. But something so huge wasn't talked about in the documentary at all. They kept saying how Cleopatra was a better ruler than her siblings, but never went deep enough to explain why. They kept saying she's this and that, but left out such a big chunk of her character that made her charismatic in the first place. The documentary reaches its peak absurdity when it portrays Cleopatra receiving training and then beating the man who was training her, wielding a sword and shield to supposedly quote-unquote fight for her people. This scene stands out as particularly logical within the context of the documentary, and it has nothing to do with the casting of the lead actress or the color of her skin. And why was she training in Syria anyway? Didn't Professor Shaley say this? Cleopatra is a lover, not a fighter. Oh, I forgot about this one. Certainly Cleopatra isn't the kind of person who gives up. She's very much a fighter. Now, another thing the documentary fabricates is it tries to imply that Julius Caesar and Arsinoe, Cleopatra's younger sister, had a somewhat sexual relationship, which is why he spared her life after he returned back in Rome. But that's absolutely not true. There is no historical evidence or widely accepted accounts that suggest a sexual encounter between Caesar and Arsinoe. This is what I call sex it up, that modern Hollywood does in order to dramatize a true event. But this is not 
not something you're supposed to do when you're making a documentary. Even if I ignore the fact that you made Cleopatra black. But how on earth am I supposed to ignore that you're trying to change the course of history? Jada Pinkett Smith, who produced this documentary, said, and I quote, We don't often get to see or hear stories about black queens. And that was really important for me, as well as for my daughter. And just for my community to be able to know those stories. Because there are tons of them. Now this is a really good idea and sounds like Jada was onto something there. But if that was really the case, why not make documentaries on actual individuals who were black? Why turn Cleopatra black? Well, most historians believe her to have a Macedonian heritage. It seems like Jada believes in any press is good press formula. Otherwise, I don't see the point of going through such lengths to change a historical figure without any base of evidence. Just like Professor Shelley, who formed her entire opinion about Cleopatra based on what she heard from her grandmother. My grandmother was the inspiration. Her saying to me, Shelley, I don't care what they tell you in school. Cleopatra was black. This is ridiculous to say the least. A documentary should have an expert's opinion dictating what happens in the documentary. But here it seems like some old senile grandmother who didn't have any significant evidence just claimed that Cleopatra was black and that was it. Netflix made a whole show on it. My point is, Cleopatra in real life was incredibly smart, intelligent, and clever. Under her rule, the ancient Egypt was blooming. She's the one who manipulated Julius Caesar to be on her side despite being exiled herself at the time. She's the one who had to deal with all the danger after Julius Caesar was killed. And on top of that, she had her children and entire country of Egypt to protect, which she did successfully for the time being. So out of everything that we could have shown about her, we decide to change her origins and turn that into a fiasco itself? I have no problem with documentaries about black heroes. We need them, but why steal someone else's history and sell it as one of your own? And if you think people of Egypt loved all previous adaptations of Cleopatra, you are still wrong. People of Egypt have been seeing misrepresentation of Cleopatra since the beginning of Hollywood. But they could forgive it before because at the time, not much information was available. But now in 2023, despite having access to so much ancient information, one of the biggest streaming platforms still makes the same mistake. And it is sure to ignite the backlash. It's important to recognize that the Greek and Egyptian response stems from a long-standing issues of misrepresentation. The people who think the criticism is just about the skin color fail to understand the deeper cultural and historical issues at play. It's not that people have only been mad about this documentary now. It's years of rage brewing inside of the people whose history you're literally stealing. And no, making Cleopatra a pure white person isn't the solution either. Egypt was never black and it was never white. Egypt is just Egypt. Just like Greece was never black or white, they were just Greek. But to go out of your way to establish that a certain historic figure was black, that tells something about you, doesn't it? If I were to make this show, I would have followed the general consensus of the historians regarding her physical appearance. That way the audience will only focus on the characters of my show and not the way they look. Another aspect of this documentary is that it tries to paint Cleopatra as a role model and a superhero as defined by 21st century standards. While her real life facts are indeed quite opposite and disturbing to say the least. For example, Cleopatra carefully orchestrated the murder of all of her siblings and rivals for the throne. They do talk about Cleopatra killing Ptolemy XIII by drowning him with the help of Caesar, but tries to cover up the killing of another brother aka Ptolemy XIV as if Cleopatra had no choice. Although this seems an horrific thing to do to us moderns, it would have actually been almost a typical family solution. She literally poisoned her little brother with wolfsbane. Cleopatra, who was skilled in alchemy and medicine, was aware that adding wolfsbane to food or drinks would cause her brother to die quickly. Cleopatra and her physician even tested poisons on criminals as part of their experiments. And because of these experiments, she knew that the wolfsbane would make her brother unable to move or ask for help, and it wouldn't leave any visible signs of harm on his body. However, the documentary fails to mention any of this important detail. The documentary seems to be afraid of portraying her true nature, possibly because they worry it would make her appear as the villain. Now, if it's a documentary, what's the problem in admitting some of the things she did was brutal and murder? How would you feel if someone made a documentary on Ted Bundy and tried to justify his actions? I'm not saying Ted Bundy and Cleopatra are one and the same, but I'm saying a documentary should present the truth no matter what. Now, imagine a different scenario, where Jada Pinkett Smith hired a proper Egyptologist and Hellenistic Greek historian to collaborate. In this scenario, she chose an actress who's half Greek and half Egyptian, or entirely Egyptian. By doing so, she could have presented 
a positive portrayal celebrating the shared heritage of Greeks and Egyptians. An actual Egyptian or Greek actress, regardless of her skin color, would have made actual Egyptians and Greeks feel included. Unfortunately, Netflix did not take this approach. Instead, they removed Greeks and Egyptians from their own shared history, repeating the same mistakes of Hollywood in the past. Now, did anything good come from this Cleopatra documentary? Yes. It started conversations and brought Egyptian and Greek people together with mutual respect. However, there are negative consequences too. The documentary once again divided us based on skin color, which is unacceptable. But kudos to the Egyptian government for actually taking a stand on this, and I hope one day they will make their own version of this documentary where the truth will finally prevail. And I find it really funny that Marvel's Moon Knight portrayed Egyptian representation more effectively than an actual documentary. May Kalamawi, a talented actor, portrayed the character Layla in Moon Knight exceptionally well. It's remarkable that a work of fiction managed to capture the essence of Egypt's history more convincingly than this so-called documentary. Okay, bye now. Plutarch, who lived 150 years after Cleopatra died, he doesn't know.